Hey guys, welcome to Florin. My name is Aaron Nays. You can find me all over Twitter at AK Nazer. You can chat with me about this or any other questions you guys might have. This is going to be a really cool episode. We're using this image by Eva. It's a really, really cool image in which we've got some atmosphere. She's one of our winners from last week's contest. So if you guys want us to edit one of your images, all you got to do is enter our contest. We do them every single week and you can find it on the sidebar on flurn.com where the contests are. So this week we're going to be putting, or today we're going to be putting some atmosphere into this. I'm going to show you guys how to make a brush that's going to look like fog or smoke or something like that. Very, very cool and we're going to do it out of the image that we're actually going to wind up putting the fog into. Sounds really complex. It's got a little bit more simple in actual practice so I'll just show you guys how to do it. Okay, here's our image by Eva and I, I really like all this fog that's, you know, like coming up from the top here and we can see these dust particles and things like that. Really, really cool. What happens if you want to add a little bit more of that, though? Um, like you want to make it look like there was a little bit more smoke. Well, I wouldn't use like a regular soft round brush in Photoshop, something like this. The reason why is because it just looks like a Photoshop brush. It doesn't look real in any way. It just kind of looks like, oh, he did that in Photoshop. Good job. It doesn't really look that good. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a custom brush that is going to look a lot more real. Let's just go ahead and delete that. Now, I'm going to go ahead and just duplicate this layer to a new document. So I'm going to right click on my background, say duplicate layer, and then we're going to put that as a new document. There we go. So this new document I'm free to just mess around with however I want. I'm going to go ahead and convert it to black and white because whenever you're creating a brush, a custom brush, color doesn't really come into play. It's just black and white. So Shift Command U is going to convert that to black and white. Now what I want to do is here in the middle I want to create like a lighter area with some like darker areas surrounding it. And uh, this is just Photoshop defines the custom brushes as basically being like light on dark or dark on light. So this is what I'm going to wind up doing with this image and then we're going to convert that into a brush. So it's really cool. I'm going to use a clone stamp tool. So S for the clone stamp tool. And we can use layer blending modes like multiply or screen to get those to show up. So we'll show you with our clone stamp brush. I'm going to just choose to clone stamp right there and paint in a screen blending mode. And we can see that just kind of like shows up right over top of our subject there. You want to try to avoid any type of angle, um, any type of document boundaries. So, like if I screen from up here, you can see how it just kind of like ends right over here because that's the top of the image. If you can avoid that, that is really um, something you should avoid. <laughs> if you can avoid that, just just do that. Just go ahead and just do it. Um, the reason is because those are just going to wind up showing up in the brush when you, in the end, and uh, they're just going to make things look a little bit worse. All right, so I'm just kind of clone stamping around here and duplicating some patterns over and over again, and I'm in screen blending mode. Let's change this to multiply, and you guys, I just want you to like have a blast. Do whatever, do whatever you think is fun in this world. Like it's not, it's not a big deal if this looks exactly like mine. And if I did this ten times in a row, it would, it would look differently every time. So it's, um, you know, just keep in mind it's not really a big deal that it, it looks like mine. But using these blending modes, you can see how things start to like fade out, kind of like interestingly and. In, a little bit more of like a, in a natural way than, than they might. If you want to undo just something, just hit Shift Option or Command Option Z and uh, it'll just undo. So things are kind of fading away in like just a little bit more of an interesting way than if I were just, you know, painting on there because it's, it's actually using the screen blending mode and the multiply blending mode to blend things with one another. So we just get a, like a little bit more of an interesting type of pattern here. All right, and what I'm looking for is not, this is not supposed to look like a, a final image here. Like this is, this is, we're making a brush here right now. Let's just go back to screen again. There we go, paint a little bit, some more of that in there. Cool. And then back to our multiply. Okay, so if you guys have never created a custom brush before, what I'm doing might look like pretty weird to you, um, but in a second it's all gonna make sense. We're just creating something that doesn't look like a regular Photoshop soft round brush uh, and the reason being is because we want all that like nice we want all the weird randomness and things like that in there it's going to make the brush look a lot better and it's going to make it look a little bit more like uh, smoke or fog or whatever whatever it is that you want all right there we go and we're looking pretty good now let's go ahead and define let's see that's a little bit there we go and we'll just change this back to screen clone stamp from there i want it to kind of blend in there just have fun with it. Do this a few different times. So with your brush now, so this is basically what's going to become the custom brush um, that's going to wind up shaping the fog in our image, which looks pretty cool. Now on this layer, I'm going to go ahead and hit Command-I to invert that because the way the brushes work is it actually 
prefers it if it is dark on a light background. So the light won't become the brush, only where it's dark will become a brush. But this isn't exactly what we want. It doesn't look, um, it, there's not enough contrast here. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna grab a levels adjustment layer and I'm gonna drag my darks and we're gonna make them even darker. So we're gonna take our black point and just bring it up a little bit. Now I'm gonna go ahead and bring it way up to right about there. And the reason why is because I don't want, remember earlier we talked about if you create a custom brush that has like definable edges around, the, around it, you're going to see those edges when you actually wind up painting with your brush. So in order to avoid that, what I did is I grabbed my levels adjustment layer and I cranked it from the left all the way to the right here and now I can see anywhere that's not pure white. So all I have to do is create a layer above my background layer and make sure I just, that I just paint with pure white just around the edges here, just like that. And what it's gonna do is it's just gonna make sure that when I do wind up using this custom brush that it's not gonna have visible edges. There we go. That is just gonna fade off naturally in, in every way. Cool, so this levels adjustment layer is just to like see what I'm doing. It's just to help me out a little bit because without it, it's just kind of hard to see it. Okay, we're gonna double click here and then I'm gonna bring this right back here somewhere that gives us a bit of contrast. There we go, that looks pretty good and um, we're ready. So this is what's going to be, it's just a random pattern of nothing basically at this point, but it's gonna make a really cool brush. So we're gonna hit shift and click on all those layers and hit command E to merge them together. I'm gonna go to edit and then we're gonna go define brush preset. Okay, and we're gonna call this fog brush one and hit okay. So that just created a fog brush. Now, what do we actually do with this brush? It's not ready to go just yet, but it's almost there. So we're gonna hit F a couple times to get out of this full screen. And then I'm gonna go back to this layer with Eva and uh, we're gonna actually start to use our fog brush on this layer. So let's go ahead and create a new layer. Now, if I just make my brush a little bit smaller and start painting around, this is the brush that I just created. You can see that's, that's the pattern there. And if I click, you can see the pattern just repeats. Now, the couple of problems being that if I just click and hold it down, this is what it does. We don't have any like cool brush dynamics built into this. So what we're gonna do is go down to our brush menu now and we're gonna like add some sophistication to this shape that we just made. So we made the shape, now we need to say like what's it gonna do when we actually paint with it. Let's go to window and down here to brush and now we're gonna turn in something like our shape dynamics. I'm gonna, our size jitter to be up. This is gonna make some of these larger and some of these smaller. We're gonna take our angle jitter and we're gonna turn that up. This is gonna make sure it just rotates an angle. So you can see already now it's gonna look a lot more random than before because it's rotating around. Very, very cool. All right, we'll turn our minimum diameter down, meaning it's gonna allow me to make some really small things if I wanna do that. All right, our scattering, let's go ahead and turn this scattering up, and that's just gonna kinda of scatter these little things around. There we go. So what we're looking for is, you know, something that's relatively random looking, and I think we're getting closer and closer to there. The next thing we're gonna turn on is transfer. I'm gonna turn our flow jitter to zero, but I'm gonna turn my control to pen pressure. So the harder I press, the more is gonna come down. And we'll just turn that up just a little bit. The less I press, less comes out of my brush. All right, so there we go. And if you wanna turn your scattering down or whatever, these are just gonna get you started, but I would recommend you kinda of like play around with whatever works for you. But you can see it's a pretty random pattern right now. And the cool thing about this, if I zoom in, there's actual definition in what I'm painting. This is not like a soft round brush. You can see there's there's shape and there's form to whatever I'm painting, uh, but it still looks really random. So that was the whole point of what we've been doing. Now, if you get it to about where you want it, which is what we've done now, I'm gonna go ahead and click here and I'm gonna go to new brush preset and we're just gonna call this fog brush two. There we go and let's hit okay. So this is now, when I first saved the, when I saved the first one, I just defined the shape of it. Now I define the brush as a whole and the movement and the actions and things like that that it's gonna take. Okay, let's go ahead and hit Command A and hit Delete to get rid of that. So I'm gonna use my brush tool here to create this fog, but I'm also gonna use my eraser tool. So brush tool is gonna create some of this fog. We're just painting around here. But I'm gonna hit E for my eraser tool. I'm gonna right click and then I'm gonna go down to my very last brush that's in this menu here, and we can see it's fog brush two. So not only are we using the brush tool as that fog brush, but I'm also using the eraser as the fog brush. So we've got kind of like a double bit of fog. This is really cool. Let's just go ahead and create a new layer. I'm gonna fill this all with white and I will show you what it looks like in like a bright red, okay? So our brush tool is gonna to create this random fog, just like that, okay? We just created this brush from scratch just now. And I'm gonna hit E for my eraser tool and, oh, 
Well, E for the eraser tool. Sorry. I didn't create a new layer with that brush on there. Okay, new layer. It was erasing the white away, and we were seeing what was under there. That's, we don't want that. Okay, new layer. We're going to paint on fog just like this, and then I'm going to hit E for the eraser tool, and it's going to erase that fog away, but it's going to do so with the same type of brush. So we get something that's like super random and you know just has some nice form, but it's just really random at the same time. And using the same technique, make your brush larger, smaller, whatever, you're able to get some really nice detail excuse me, detail in here that doesn't look like you just did it in Photoshop. So that's basically what we're going to do. All right, so let's go ahead and delete all those layers. Grab my brush tool. So we're going to hit B for the brush tool. I'm going to grab the color that's here in the actual light itself, and then we're going to start painting up at the top. And again, we're just using the same brush that we used before. So some of these areas it's going to look better, some of these it's going to look worse. We're going to need to change it in some of the areas. Not a big deal. There we go. Let's make it a little bit smaller up here. So like this doesn't look real, right? So you grab your eraser tool, and with the same brush now, you just erase it away. It's still going to be like at a nice random pattern. You just erase it away till it does look real. All right. There we go. Oh, shoot. I'm on my background layer. Never do that. <laughs> Never go to your background layer. If you ever do that, go to Window and down to History. I just don't have a problem with that. Go all the way up to the very top, and you can just click, and that'll go back to the original image. Okay, there we go. Let's create a new layer this time and actually do what I'm supposed to do. So here with our brush tool, we're just going to paint white here on the top. There we go. Just like that. You can make your brush larger or smaller. And you can see how much better this looks. It doesn't look like you know a Photoshop brush. It looks like something that actually you know is atmosphere in the air. And it helps because we're using the lighting in this image in a way that, you know, there actually would be light lighting this up because we can, see, we can see it. Okay, now let's just use our eraser tool. Same again, same brush. I'm on a new layer now, so it's not going to do something totally weird. And it's going to just erase it away in like a nice, even manner. So we're just, we did that. I mean, it done, it, the cool thing is it doesn't really look like it was done in Photoshop. Um, I'm all about creating fog and things like this and doing it in real life for sure, but sometimes you just want to maybe just enhance it a little bit in Photoshop. So that's where these really interesting like brushes and all these other cool techniques come into play. There we go. Maybe just bring some right around there. Very cool. So just using this brush that we just created as well as the eraser tool, we're able to get a heck of a lot more atmosphere into this photo. Not only that, but you can control it exactly how you want it controlled. I'll lower the opacity that just a little bit. So we can see very, very cool. Now, if you wanted to do the same thing with those little specks, you could do that too. Let's just switch back to our other image. There we go. This is, uh, we'll just create a new layer over the top of this. We'll fill that with white. All right, and we'll go ahead and full screen this. Let's just create this as a, like a really small brush now. You could use a black, um, there we go. You could use just a regular black brush here if you wanted like a regular soft brown brush, but I'm going to use these tiny little, I'm just going to use the brush that we actually just made. And I'm going to make like little dust bunnies in the air, something like this. Cool. And we're going to go to edit again to define brush preset. And we'll call this dust. Cool. And now let's go back to this or original image. We've got our dust brush now. We just need to go back into our window, go down to brush to train, change a couple settings. Like shape, shape dynamics, you want your size jitter all the way up here. Right, and you want your um, scattering to be turned on. Let me sh just make sure that this actually does what I want. Oh, you can see the outline of the brush. You, can you see the square of that brush? The reason is because we didn't follow our own rules. We just need to make sure that, let's hit F for full screen here. We just need to be sure that you can't see anything outside of it. You can see that the background, that's actually not a pure white background, it's like a light gray. So I'm going to just make sure that my white point right here is actually set to the background. Apparently I didn't fill it with white, apparently I filled it with light gray. All right, now we're going to do the same. <laughs> same thing again, sorry. We're going to go here and shift click all these, hit command E and go to edit define brush preset. So it should look better dust too. It should actually work a little bit better now. Okay, so our brush, we're going to right click and go to dust two, go to window down to brush, all right, so now you can see it's just little spots. Sorry, 
That was my bad. I hope you forgive me. <laughs> all right, we'll turn our size jitter up, minimum diameter down, and same thing. Basically all the same settings as we had before. And um, now we're just gonna paint, and it's gonna paint little, little dust specks. You can turn your scattering a little bit higher if you want. All right, let's just do this on a new layer, and we'll just call these dust specks. So now, with the same, same technique, I'm painting on more specs in there, which is going to help sell the effect even more. All right, so on a new layer, we have all these little specs in here and some atmosphere. So I'm just using the same things that were already present in this image to just kind of like go a little bit further with them. And um, that's, that's a really great way to use Photoshop. Like, use elements that are already in the photo, just enhance them a little bit if you can. So we just did those, both of those with a custom brush. And because I'm feeling in a good mood, I'll just give you guys a custom brush. You can download them and link them below on flurn.com. All right, there we go. Let's do a little bit of color toning with this image because I think it will work really well. Just grab a levels adjustment layer, grab a blue channel, we'll pull that up just a little bit, put some yellows in there. We're gonna do this on top of our, on top of our white, by the way. And let's put some green in there. And then we'll go to a red channel and we'll push this a little bit more towards red. There we go. Very cool. So just a little bit of color fun in there, just to give it a little bit more of an artistic feel to it. All right, and that is it, guys. So creating some cool custom brushes that are gonna help bring that atmosphere into the photo. Here's the before and the after. Didn't take too long, and the cool thing is you have these brushes now. You can right click, go to, let's go to a new layer, and window down here to brush. I'm still on this same like uh, dust brush, so you can go here and go to new brush preset and just call this Dust three. So now you have these brushes and you can use them for any image you want to. They're gonna work on any single image and you just had to create them with one and then you can use them over and over and over again. And that's it guys. Thanks so much for watching Flirt. I hope you learned a ton. You guys can use this for any of your images. The best places to use them are when light is gonna be coming from behind your subject because that's when the light actually hits all those particles in the air and really makes them like shine really nicely. So you can use those particles like use that as a hint to add this like fog and atmosphere and the things like that where the light is actually hitting and it's going to make sure to look really really good really real thanks so much for watching florin guys this is the end of it if you do use any of these brushes and edit your images please leave them in a comment down below because i'd love to see them and i want to see you guys get better and better and better thanks so much guys we'll flirt you later bye everyone two brushes in one day oh no the tv flash no signal the day is ruined <laughs> For more information on this episode, go to flurn.com. While you're there, be sure to check out our pro tutorials. These are the most in-depth Photoshop tutorials available on the internet. If you want one for free, just sign up for our newsletter following the link right down below and it'll be delivered to you instantly. We also feature exclusive interviews, written contents, inspiration from people like you as well as professional photographers. And be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel.